Okay, so this exercise is going to continue with the pen tool and be an opportunity for you to get some more practice and just experience using it. And I thought it would be cool to use one of your own drawings here. I just took a page out of one of my sketchbooks here, and this is a continuous line bl blind contour study. Basically, I used one line without picking up my pen and was drawing somebody without looking at my paper. And I think it turns out pretty cool. Um, but I need to crop this, so that looks kind of bad. Let me let me get this cropped here. And let's see here. If you don't have one of your own drawings, that's fine. You can just use a drawing that you find online. Just make sure it has the right licensing type where you're free to use it. But I expect that most of you probably have your own drawings that you could play around with here. So... That looks okay, it's still a bit dark. Uh, I'm gonna do a levels adjustment here, right? Just to brighten this up. So I'm gonna come up to image and adjustments and levels. So it's mostly the white of the paper that I wanna get nice and bright because it's a, it's a little bit dark here. My photo was a little dark. So I mean, if you have a scanner, use that, but if not, a, a, a photograph works just fine. You'll just have to put it in and do a couple of prep things like I'm doing here. Um, these three eyedroppers here, your white, your gray, and your black, we want to select that white, at least for this image here. You might need to do something different for your own, but notice the, the paper here is a little bit yellow and dingy. So I'm going to just, again, I'm going to select that white, and then I'm just going to click on the paper, and that brightened everything up nice and, nice and bright there. If you have a charcoal or a pencil drawing that has some lighter areas that you want to darken, you would click your, eye, your black eyedropper tool and come in and find the lighter values of pencil that you want dark and click there. But since this is all pretty consistent, I don't really see anything that needs to be darkened as far as the line work goes. But you would basically just find where you would want that dark value and then you would just click. And yeah, see that didn't even really change anything because again, those values look pretty good. Um, I can still see some texture and some gray spots on the paper, so I'm going to come back to I'm going to come back to my white eyedropper tool, and I'm just going to click around a little bit in some of these spots until I get that brightened up just the way that I want, and that looks okay right there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this layer, okay? And you could play around with your blend modes as well if you need to do further refinements. Remember what these do if, if things are, if you want to block out some lighter values or block out some darker values, right? You could adjust some of these, some of these layers here, right? And the blend modes here. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna leave that on normal for right now, but you may want to change that as well. And what we could do, if we just wanted to color this in right away, we could just come to our paint bucket tool and, right, you'd have to take note and make sure, you know, there weren't any open gaps where the color could go through. But since this was a continuous line drawing, I know that, you know, there's no, there's not going to be any gaps like that. But if I wanted to just colorize this right away, I could just start with, with my paint bucket tool. And let me kind of open this up a little bit. I could just find... I could just start filling this in, right? Super easy to colorize your own works, right? Okay. I'm going to get carried away here, but this could be a lot of fun here. Okay. So that's, if you, so right there, I mean, you could colorize your drawings just like that. But I want to give you some more time with the pen tool, right? And what I'm gonna have you do, let me make another layer here. I'm gonna have you do <laughs> the hard way is I'm gonna have you use the pen tool. And what I'd like you to do, let's create a new layer, so we're on that, is I'd like you to go over your drawing with the pen tool. Again, just as a way to get some practice. And in this case, it would actually make sense for me to use the freeform pen tool just because the nature of these lines and the line quality would be hard to replicate this using something as smooth as the pen tool or the curvature pen tool. So the freeform pen tool would actually, that would be what I would use here. 
but depending on what your drawing is, you may, you know, you may need to use a different tool. But what I'm going to have you do is with the pen tool. Now, here's where we have shape and then we have path, right? So remember, a path doesn't exist unless you tell it what to do, right? I mean, we put the path down and then we can apply a stroke to it or do something else to it. And then there's shape. So if the end goal were to create a vector image here, right? We would go, we could go about it a couple of different ways, but you would have to, you would have to create these, these lines. And recall if you were on shape, right? I'll just show you here. So there's stroke and then there's fill, right? And if I'm on, if I keep, if I set the fill to no fill, and if I just have a stroke, let me just, and then I'll go to my, I'll do freeform pen tool just to kind of show you for the exercise. So if I start going over these lines, and I'm doing a horrible job right now, but, right, I'm going over my lines, and notice every time I do it, every time I complete a, a, a loop there, I, it creates a new shape. So this may or may not be what you want to do, right? So you have to kind of think ahead about how you want this to be structured. And if I, so let me turn off these bottom layers. So let's just say I made the whole drawing and I have all my shapes. If I want to then colorize, if I come to my paint bucket tool and I try to click, it tells me it must be rasterized first. So once I rasterize it, that converts it into pixels, right? And then I have a pixel-based image that is dependent on resolution. So not exactly what we want for a vector image, but we're going to come to that next week. We're going to get into SVG files or scalable vector graphics. So don't worry too much about uh, what this end result is going to be. I more want you to just have the time and the practice with the pen tool. So with the pen tool, I would say if you keep it on shape and just go with stroke, just know that once you're done and if you go ahead with colorizing it, you're just going to have to raster that image and then colorize it, right? And then the alternative thing you could do is you could come up and make sure you're on path. I'm going to come back to the freeform pen tool, make sure I'm on a new layer here. But then I could create the path, right? And then in the past, we've come here to work paths, and then I would apply a stroke to that path. I could do that here. But the other thing I could do, I could just right click and I could fill, or sorry, stroke path. And then right before I did that, I would make sure my brush was set at a, a brush setting that I liked. I could just hit OK. That turned out green because I was on green there. But that's the other way you could, you could fill in this information, right? So you could be on the, you could be on shape and just make sure you have no fill and just keep that stroke active and fill this all out, but just know it's going to create a new layer every time unless you change this to combine shapes. Either one would work just fine, but you might want to just have it on combine shapes so you're not filling up your, your layers panel right here. Um, or you could be on path and create each of these shapes and then right click and stroke path, right? So you're gonna do that for your drawing and maybe not, maybe don't pick a drawing that's gonna take you forever to do, but once you have that drawing basically copied with the pen tool, you could then turn off the under layers and then what you could do is you could come in and then you could fill, right? You could fill the drawing, uh, fill these sections and basically colorize your drawing. Take your time with this, but also think about, you know, how how the pen tool can work and and get some practice using that pen tool. And then when you're finished with this, you can just submit this to me as a PSD file and I can just take a look at it here and next week again we'll talk more about how to get these drawings actually saved as vector files that we could then open up and and scale larger or smaller. But for now, just just use the pen tool and get some practice and, and get adjusted to how that pen tool works and flipping back and forth between your layers and your paths and stroking paths and just overall getting more experience in. Okay.